Hello Neil and it's Tim Shisa here. What we have for you today is a quick video overview of the Sony Ericsson Xperia Ray. This is a brand new device straight out of Sony Ericsson which is released just a couple of weeks ago. This has been sent to us thanks to our uh, partners at mobbycity.com.au which is really kind of them. It allows me to review devices like this for you at Neewin. Basically, this is Sony Ericsson's mid-range device, one of the the few that they've they've made that are powered by Android, apart from the like the Sony Ericsson Xperia Mini and devices like this. The Ray has a 3.3 inch reality display. Now this basically means that it's got a high pixel density and it's powered by Sony Ericsson's Bravia engine which gives some really fantastic picture quality in some of the pictures, which we'll show you a bit of later. Inside, it's powered by the Qualcomm 1 GHz Snapdragon chipset, the second generation. While it is just single core, it still allows for some very powerful processing power inside this device, of course at 1 GHz, and the Adreno 205 GPU is more than enough to play games on a mid-range device like this. <clears throat> Obviously you're not going to be doing a hell of a lot of gaming on the small screen, but it's always nice to see that there's a bit of power behind it. What we have on the back of the device is a 8 megapixel camera with autofocus and a flash there. It is capable of taking 720p uh, video as well. And on the front there's also a front facing camera at the top. What I really like about this device is the design, uh, for one thing. I've never really used a smartphone that, of this size before and it's really interesting to get out of the box and see um, the small size of it. Uh, it's very thin, it's very light and compared to my Galaxy S, which I'll show you briefly, it's very different. Um, as you can see I've been used to using this device a lot, as you can see by the fingerprints all over it. But this device is a lot bigger than the Ray, and that was a bit of a shock to me actually, um, getting it out of the box for the first time. It's very minimalistic. Um, the entire front is one big glass panel, as you can see here. There are two capacitive buttons on the front here, along with the speaker at the top and the display, and there's one physical button, and when you push that, it lights up a little ring around the edge, as you can see there. This also glows different colours for notifications and power, like green and red, for example. On the back you have a soft touch plastic, which is really nice in the, in the hands. There's a noise cancelling microphone up the top there, and also the speaker down the bottom below the Sony Ericsson logo. On the sides you have the mini USB, I mean micro USB port. On the top is a power button plus a USB, I mean, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and on the bottom is another microphone. I'll take the back cover off the device briefly to show you a bit about the insides. This is powered by a 1500 milliamp hour battery. Now the battery life on this device I do have to say is fantastic. You get a very long life out of it um, and by long I mean like two days on moderate usage which is much better than what I've got on other devices of this era. So if you're concerned about battery life, that's definitely a plus to the Xperia Ray here. The device is also very thin. I think it's 9.4 millimeters. And that really does, you really can feel it in your hands. It's a great ergonomic feel. Everything is in perfect placement. And the 3.3 inch screen really seems to fit. I'll say a bit about the UI. This is powered by Android 2.3 Gingerbread with the Timescape UI over the top of that. And that's Sony Ericsson's own concoction. Basically what you have is five home screens here with custom widgets, a couple of custom apps, and it's not really much in the notification pane or anything else really that impressive. There are some cool things such as if you 
pinch pinch in to view all your home screens instead of showing them all it just shows you the widgets that you have on here so you can view quick information like the music that you've been playing or your photos and weather speaking of photos the camera on this is simply fantastic um, it's a media centric device essentially and Sony Ericsson have really gone to the trouble of including a great camera sensor on here now you can't really see that uh, through the camera very well so it's best to look at the written review for the full-blown shots but really the camera on this is fantastic and thanks to the high density display which is 480 by 854 on a 3.3 inch display you really can't determine the individual pixels and you can really see the writing very clearly like you can on devices such as the iPhone. Not only is the camera great, but also the music player. This is just one part of the media features. Obviously, through the rear speaker, you're not going to get great audio, but through headphones, it really is outstanding quality. And not only that, but you can view quick information about the artists and things that you have on here that quick button push and the interface is really nice. Generally I'm a bit half-hearted on you know custom user interfaces but I think the real good thing about this is the Timescape app that is included and if I was going back to vanilla Android this is something that I think I'd miss. Basically it's a collection of all your friends status updates and everything from your social media along with messages and information from your actual phone in this nice flowing 3D interface which shows off the 1 GHz process on the inside. Nothing in the interface is laggy whatsoever. Basically it just shows you everything and you can sort it by Twitter and Facebook and things like that. You can see messages, tapping on it, you know, brings it up and tapping it further will open the respective apps. I was really impressed by that Timescape app that was included and I think that's a really good thing that has been included. Um, not too sure about some of the spam apps that obviously are in here. This is not a carrier branded phone but you still get some apps that I would prefer to get rid of. Though, luckily you can do that with some of them with this little button here which allows you to delete your custom apps but that doesn't happen with all of them. So not much, to, not much else to say about the Timescape user interface. There's they really haven't done much except for skin it and include the Timescape app itself. Now the performance of the device, for a mid-range, this really is quite good. And while it's only a second generation Snapdragon, and it's not dual core, it hasn't got one gig of RAM or anything like that. But for a device that only costs 400 Australian dollars, it really is quite good. Um, on a device, for example, say the Wildfire S, you only get a 600 megahertz processor. But this one, this is, I would say, equally fast in terms of opening apps and things like that than my Galaxy S. And while my Galaxy S has the better GPU, this really does hold its own. And yeah, while it's not while it's not dual core, you can't really expect anything better for the price. And I've got to say that the Ray definitely holds holds up in that respect. Of course, the big thing that you need to decide when choosing a device like this is whether you want the big screen or not. And if you're into getting a device that's small, it's compact, it easily fits in your pocket, and is pretty all around good, then you should definitely consider the Xperia Ray. Um, one of the downsides, of course, is typing on a keyboard. It's not exactly easy on a 3.3 inch screen, but it's definitely not bad either. And I would definitely recommend this for a mid-range phone. Please check out the written review for all the little itty gritty bits about the device. Um, it's quite lengthy and detailed, so please check that out on neowin.net. Also, if you have any specific questions that I haven't covered in the review, please feel free to contact me on my Twitter feed, at ScorpusV, and also check out uh, Neowin's Twitter feed, at NeowinFeed. That'll be all from me. Uh, it's, been, it's been great fun reviewing this device, and thanks to Mobby City for sending this. Yeah, and please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Um, any of the phone reviews that I'll be doing will be posted up there in a little mini overview like I've done here. And I hope you enjoy. Thank you.